What is up, party people? Justin Langlois, video number four in the anthology. I, I saw we were trending in Apple iTunes over the weekend, so much love for everybody that helped us get there. Today we're going to talk about cap rates. Love them, hate them, maybe you're somewhere in between. Uh, cap rates are great. The, the capitalization rate is derived by taking the actual the net operating income, the NOI of a, of a property, dividing it by the sales price or, or the purchase price, and it, it generates a cap rate. So these are fantastic to, uh, to help you get the party started. It's not something that is recommended for any, any sort of long-term uh, research or 10-year, 20-year modeling that you're doing on the property. It captures a slice in time. So to break it down for you guys, I will, I'm going to share with you a sheet that we give a lot of our advisors, our new to business advisors, when they, when they jump on board here at Sterling Properties. This is from thebalance.com, CCIM, SIOR, uh, many of your, of your, your uh, commercial real estate groups have these. So this illustration shows you a gross income of $40,000 less, some taxes, some maintenance, and some insurance. It gives you a $24,000 NOI. It then takes the $24,000, it divides it by $95,000, and you generate a 25%. Uh, that's a cap rate. It's not to be confused with the rate of return because the rate of return and the cap rate are two com completely different animals. Uh, all right, let's go with what I love about this example. I've never done a 25% cap rate in my life. I think that it would be awesome to do it. I probably wouldn't be making a ton of LinkedIn videos if I did as a result of it. Uh, but again, it captures the slice in time that that one year that you're looking at. A seller's cap could vary greatly from a buyer's cap. The seller's got set expenses in there for taxes and insurance. He or she could have owned that property for the last 20 years, and their expenses could be relatively low. Your cap as a buyer may be may may be completely different because you know your taxes are going to increase. In most cases, your insurance is going to increase. So. In the single tenant net lease world where, where I live, where I hang out, cap rates are used for commodities. So properties that are traded like a commodity, a Walgreens, a Chick-fil-A, a CVS, maybe it's a ground lease like a Chase Bank or a McDonald's. And they are the one metric that we use uh, most frequently and with the most accuracy. When it comes to multi-tenants, retail, office, industrial, even multifamily, it's it's a, again, it's a great metric to, to start the party, but it is not how you ultimately want to value that property. Some of the things that I don't like about them, that my clients don't like about them, are they, they don't take into account leverage, what you're borrowing versus you know, what you're putting down. They don't take into account things like the time value of money and capital expenditures. So those are just a few of the items that would actually you know, hit a balance sheet as opposed to just your your true p l they are uh again no measure for future cash flows so year two year three year four yeah you bought this thing at a nine cap and you hit a home run and your buddies are high-fiving you and it's fantastic it could greatly change in year two or year three so let me know what your thoughts are on cap rates in the comments below love them hate them share with the group i appreciate y'all's time peace